how are you doing guys you're welcome to this sec second section of this video now what we're gonna do is just to browse around to see what um, Laravel has created for us automatically remember that if you're having issues with your server uh, first step is to try and restart it in your command prompt all right you try and restart it now another thing that I didn't mention earlier is that your antivirus could be blocking your server there's a file called server.php that tries to run your server and you could have an antivirus that tries to block it so in my own case you see my um, uh, my avg was trying to block was blocking it so what you will notice is that your browser is rotating endlessly it doesn't actually open the uh your laravel app so what you're going to do is to off your antivirus for the period that you're coding remember that once you're done you should just get back the antivirus backup to keep your system protected all right now sometimes when you run your server it's going to pop up your antivirus is going to pop up a warning asking you whether it should block the server so say no all right otherwise just off it so if you want to off it go to the uh, your taskbar like this right click and it will give you option to off turn off the antivirus so when you once you right click on your antivirus any antivirus at all will give you the option to turn it off sometimes for one hour for for 10 hours for a whole day so you see mine i just um, turn it off until my system restarts you see okay so we're good now um the first thing is the registration page if you click on register it's going to pop up this registration page now what you need to observe is the the url here it says the main whatever we have dot com when we host this website from here to this place will be our website dot com slash register it will pull up the registration page so we are going to create a just one account that we can be using i'll use my usual name as an account email address uh, my normal email address password i'll just come up with a john doe password all right password i'll confirm password hit register so it will naturally go to your your submit the items to your database do the registration and log you in automatically and guess what um we have this issue and the first issue we have is that uh it says base table of view not found whenever it tells you this look at the name that is here this is the laravel laracos database it's looking for a table called users so uh whenever you see this error a lot especially when you're still building what it means is that it has gone to the database and searched and couldn't find that table in the database so i'll show you what the solution is now so we're on php my admin click on databases well, let's find our database we'll call it laracos laracos where is it laracos you click on it so it shows us laracos as you can see no tables found it's just empty and the reason it's empty is because we've not told it to create any table for us in laravel you don't come to the database here to create tables like you would do in normal php you have to create those tables in laravel and give an instruction to laravel command prompt here to go to the database and create those tables so i will sh see an example the place you create or the act the act of creating the tables right here in laravel is called migration all right so to do that you go to database folder and go to migrations so migration will help you create the database tables automatically so what we have here is um that when we run the last command we run php artisan make auth what what happened was that it created these migrations for us you see in the migrations we have users it created users id field username field created email field created um email verify that when uh that is this is this um if the person goes to their inbox to verify the email and create a password field and remember token and all so we also created a password recovery process in case somebody uh lost their password very very nice very very nice okay so now we have to run a command to tell laravel to create this all right uh we're gonna run this command several times but i just want to get uh, past the first one so you understand what how it works to do that we're going to run the migration command so we're going to do php php artisan make colon migration then we tell it migrate oh sorry uh since what we're going to do php artisan migrate 
since we already have migrations we just want to tell it hey go to this place uh, copy whatever is here send it to a database that's what uh, this command does so um, it's going to be done in a few seconds but if you want to read more about migrations uh, we have an error we're going to fix it don't worry if you want to read more about migrations which i advise you should do you should just go to laravel website laravel.com then you go to documentations and find migrations and read about it um, if you read about migrations once it will help you to understand all the things that are possible with migrations so that um, if you ever have any problem you know exactly where to consult so i'm, going, I'm just taking you through the, the documentation you just go straight to i think it's in eloquent um database migrations you see so in the under database if you click on migrations it's going to just show you a whole page about migration just take your time just read through just scan through to see what's available what's obtainable it's very important if you do this once it's going to save you a lot of time learning laravel in fact any any uh, topic i introduce just go uh, to this documentation and just scan through everything on that page it will save you a lot of time so you know what's obtainable and what's not uh, obtainable okay so the error we had is simply saying that we need to do something there is there's a setting that um you all you always need to do in laravel it says um, sqs the syntax error access violation 107 specify key was too long so we need uh to go fix it user email unique so um we just need to go and tell laravel how to extend this but in case you're facing this error um instead of me just showing you just google it syntax error access violation specify key was too long in laravel cool just copy this Remember that when you press Ctrl C, it's going to do this funny restarting of the thing. Uh, go to Google, paste it. Usually, the first, the first result, a uh, search result has the solution. Uh, all the way from Laravel 5.4. To tell you that this is a common error with all Laravel installations. This is a common error with all of them. Now, if you look at this search result, you see that I'm the, the second result. I just showed how to do that. So mine is ranking number two on YouTube, my own results. So if you go to Laravel 5.6, you'll see exactly how to do that too. So I've opened this. So the, the, the way to do that is simple. We'll just copy just a single line of code. Come here. Um, this is the error. We come here. So we're looking for a file called um app service provider that's php so we go to app app service you go to providers on the app go to providers look for app service provider that's the first one all right so we'll click on it now we have to upload to up to, um, import something at the top then we have to put a line here and that's it all right so uh we import this at the top don't ever forget Many people forget this and this solution doesn't work for them. You must import this line at the top. So if we go to the top here, we'll right click and paste. Alright, so we're importing facade schema. Alright, then we get back there and um, get the default length. We extend the default length in the boot. Remember it says in the boot method, we go there and paste and save. And that's it. So if we come back right now and press the up arrow key, it shows PHP Artisan Migrate. We'll hit enter and then we watch the magic happen. So it has another error. The error says the base table or, or view already exists. The reason is uh, just pay attention to these errors. I'm taking my time to explain what they mean because you meet them a lot while coding. All right. It's, on, it's good that you understand what, how, what they mean and be able to solve it. Anytime you see base table or view already exists, it means Laravel is trying to create the table, but on getting to the database, it found out that the table already exists. So let's go to a database. If I click on structure one more time, Laracos, it says that it has created two tables already. So remember that it, what happened was it created these two tables from a previous command, but it ran into errors. So it stopped there. All right, so now it's trying to create the tables again and it found them and it's saying it's complaining. So the way to solve this is you do php, uh, php artisan migrate. You can do fresh 
or refresh to migrate fresh or refresh depend depending on the larva version it will work so if i do uh fresh you see it that's this command simply goes to the database wipes up everything there wipes it clean then recreates all right so if we now refresh this place we're gonna see three tables you see it's complete now no errors everything just runs smoothly you see beautiful now we can try and sign up so we go to our laravel uh, website our laravel app i'm still looking for it okay so remember we ran into this error before i'll do reload yeah continue it will try again but this time it will succeed beautiful you see we're logged in and look at what's happening here is dave was hello and uh, it's giving me the logout option with what which works this is dash dashboard that says you are logged in i know you know this page look at if you want to know the page you are on on laravel it's called route and if you want to know the page you're on you you just have to look at the the um, URL now we're seeing that is a slash home I uh, of course if we want to know what we have to do is just come to routes go to web.php and we'll look for the router has slash home you see slash home it's in um, home controller index this is the function that controls uh, what is displayed so if we go to app controller go to app and go to HTTP go to controllers we'll go to home controller now we're looking for the index function you see the index function simply calls a view file called home and what we just have to do is just come all over to the bottom go to resources go to views and uh, we find home you see home.blade so you see you are logged in so let me just change this to see to show you to prove to you that this is what is there you are logged in now I just changed it if I come here and reload You are logged in now you see that's beautiful so let's test the logout function we click on logout and then we wait a few seconds and then it's logged out you see now it's logged out it's showing us register and login this is beautiful now we're going to go into actually building what we have to build all right the migrations that's how uh, you build what you have to build so you guys how are you doing it's your boy Dave partner so what's happening here is um, this may not be exactly bright as bright as I wanted it to be but this is a rough sketch of the database that I sketched before starting this course all right so I just want to quickly run through it so you understand what we're trying to do It's not very clear but it will give you a general idea of where we are heading to all right okay so right here we have um, we are going to create a user's table that will have email, first name, last name, password, gender, date of birth uh, is subscribed. Uh, so we can monitor if this user has subscribed. Then uh, we can have courses, a courses table that will list all the courses. Each table will have title, description, and uh, probably an amount, uh, discount, user ID. And of course, we can have like a, a profile picture. All right. All right. So if the uh, videos the way we want to build this course is that we upload the videos on YouTube and then we re reference them on our platform so we don't actually have handle the video uploads the video uploads are being done on YouTube all right then we reference them on our platform we just use the YouTube API to pull them into our platform okay so that's how you have um um, about instructor playlist created modified number of subscribers so these are the things we have uh, details we have about the course then we have a subscription table this table is supposed to track um, which user subscribed to which course and uh, that's just it and then we can have um categories table each course will belong to a category so we'll have category id here then we have payments table to track which user made which payment what amount and when we're gonna do that then we have comments each course will have a comment underneath it so people can just come underneath the comment the the each course just like you have on youtube and make comments all right and that's it this is just an mvp basic stuff that will teach you a lot about how these things work so we're gonna do that right away and uh, we start with the users table by modifying it we're going to add first name last name password so this is going to be our guide we're going to add gender date of birth and um, to know whether the user is subscribed so here 
we'll go to database resources databases migration under users migration i know it's user migration because I, I can look here and see that it's create user stable that's how i know it's user migration another way to know it is what is here what is here is um, users so it's bearing the name of the table in the database you see so here we're going to just add um, gender we're going to change so this is her first name last name all right last so in migrations if you read that page i showed you on laravel you will see uh you will learn when to use string and when to use timestamp and so on and so forth but i'll be explaining some of them as i can while doing this so the email your email is string and it must be unique first name doesn't have to be unique last name okay we have to make it no level no level so no level means that the person can register this and um, uh, can af afford not to fill in any uh, values for it during registration. So it's optional, making the fields optional. Okay, email is not optional first. Uh, name is not optional. We have timestamp uh, is not, it's, it's optional. Password. So we're going to do for gender too. Do gender. Gender is string. Yeah, you just choose any gender you want. So we're going, we're going to enter default value uh, for gender. I think we can leave it or we can just leave default. Default value can make it male. If you don't enter any gender, we force it to be male. That's how we roll. Okay, so we have gender. Then we're going to have which other thing? Uh, this will be our guide. Date of birth and is subscribed. So date of birth is going to be a date, date time. So we do table. Date. and then we're going to do date of birth and it's going to be null level so it's optional to fill so i want to put the important ones at the top so once person somebody enters their name they should enter their email straight off and then all these other ones are optional uh, gender male date of birth and we want to know if you're subscribed we can do table is oh we can do tiny int tiny int if you don't know what tiny int is in php it's um it's the kind of character type that you use to check whether something is true or false it can only be a, it's usually only be as zero or one so in tiny int uh it's not level no level but we're going to set the default hope you're seeing what i'm typing even though it's no level we're going to set the default to be zero zero means the person is not subscribed by the time they are registering default i'll put zero so it's a tiny int tiny int the field name will be is subscribed so we want to know whether this user is subscribed. If they are subscribed, it will read one. If they are not subscribed, we programmatically set it to zero. So when you are signing up the, for the first time, it should be zero. All right. Now, um, just remember that um, if you want to learn all those um, character types, once you're in migrations, you can just scroll all the way down and you start seeing it. You see, you have big int. It's under which available column types. So you see um, big in, big increment, um, big integer, boolean, uh, date, date time, and so on. You see a lot of them. So we just used date for the birthday, all right? And um, double, if you want to do money, you can use double, decimal, you see? A lot, a lot. All right, I think uh, this basically sorts our problem. Now we're going to go to the next table and uh, we have to create the next migration and to do that we have to come to our command prompt. Uh, we can do php artisan make colon migration and we're going to say um, create users. Okay, the next table we want to create is um, courses courses table 
so um that is just the way to do that so of course if you want to read more about it you just go to come to the migrations page on laravel and you can see that right here that's what is being taught php artisan make migration create user stable as you can see i'm not making these things up it's all on the on the um documentation so that will help you create user stable so if we get back right there right here we can hit enter Remember that the courses, all your table names in Laravel must be in plural and must be all small lowercase. All of them. So we've created a courses table, a courses migration. Then uh, we can go and code into the courses migration. So if you look here, you see that courses migration has been created. If we click on this, you see that it has written some things for us. Now we can start coding. Uh, now we can start uh, something like table uh, what is the first thing about the course it's title you can do string title and um, now we're going to give it uh, is it nullable it's not nullable is is there anything default no default so the user must enter the course title then we'll do the description yeah, the description is not nullable. You must enter description. And then uh, remember that we're just um, following this guide. Description. Then we have to do photo. There's no photo here, but I'll do it. I'll have to add photo. So the same thing. So description is a lot of text. So instead of using string, we're going to use long text. So string for photo. It's nullable so it can be empty all right photo now um where did i get this long text of course i got it from the migrations table if you go scroll down as usual you're going to see these things are in order c c d d d d d d d e so we're going to l and we will find long text you see long text is usually used for description because it can contain a lot of texts all right now long text uh, and then the next thing is um discount or uh, user id so we need to know the user id table uh, string user id user id is not string it's integer integer so we can make it nullable because we must know the person that is creating something and then So I think what I'll have to do is to pause this video and um, quietly fix all these things, then restart. So how are you guys doing? Um, here is the completed version. I took my time to do that. So what happened is that we have user ID. It's an integer. We have title is a string. And we have long text, which is a description. Another about the instructor of the course or the creator of the course. That section is also going to be big. So it's, um, it's going to be a text area. That's why it's long text. So we have um, double for discount price. So I didn't do this double well. So to do that, we're just going to come here and search for double. Double, you see, you need to tell it uh, two numbers. The number that will be before the decimal point and how many decimal, decimal points it will have after. So I'm just going to take this and um, add here. Add here. So this is basically, for instance, if we type $1,000.86, all right, it means there are four numbers before the decimal point and um, after. So if I want to capture numbers that are less than 10,000, all right, you know, 10,000 is now five numbers, but 9,999 is the highest four number word in the world. So we're just going to put this to four. You see, if we put this to four, this is the highest possible number that can ever be here. All right. So usually I think the maximum I've, I've ever seen for this is 10 before the 10 numbers before the decimal point. You can always have more. All right. So then after the decimal point, the highest number you can have is two. So I think for our system, uh, this, this just makes sense. 10 before and uh, two after. I think it's okay. It's cool. All right. So now we have two of them sorted. Another thing we can look at is the playlist URL. Remember, 
that uh, we said that our playlist is going to we're going to just put the playlist URL here and we use uh, our software code to go to YouTube and automatically fetch the whole videos in the playlist all right then uh, secondly we need um, the view count we need to know how many people that have just opened this course so if somebody just views it at all we need to know um, how many people viewed it all right then we also need to look at um, the subscriber count how many people have actually made payment to subscribe to this course we need to know and then we need to know the status of this course and we set it to default default means that the first time we are creating it it should set this default uh, to zero which and we want to use zero to mean that the course is not live which means only the instructor can see it only the instructor and the admin of this platform can see this course all right once it goes live then if it, it this will turn to one so the status will be one once the status is one everybody else can see it so we have photo of course in case we need to add a picture or a screenshot or whatever for the course uh, this is it it's going to be string and then we have soft deletes now soft delete stands for deleted at the field it will create in the database is called deleted at that this will be the name of the field but what soft delete does is that um, if you have soft delete in any platform um, it means that when something is deleted on that platform it doesn't actually delete it doesn't realistically delete what happens is that it's just that it is turned off all right so like in facebook if you're using facebook today when you delete data it doesn't actually go they don't let you delete that data what happens is that that data is hidden from everyone else except facebook admin all those items you thought you deleted facebook admin can still access them and see them but you cannot see them and every other person on facebook every other user will not see them so that's the kind of thing we want to implement here we don't want people deleting things they have created even though they're going to mark it as deleted but our system will still be able to have it saved that's what soft delete does all right now we have everything sorted that we're just going to go to the next um to the next uh file so you, i'll click here we'll go to the next migration and the next migration according to our diagram here is um um categories but before i go ahead there are two fields here created and modified at that's what this last line does this timestamp it creates it creates new fields two new two new fields in your database that uh, monitors when this record was created and every time you 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 edit this record so it will create a record a field called created underscore at and also create another one called modified underscore at all right okay is, is it modified or updated i think it's updated updated at all right so uh now you're conversant with creating tables let's see if you can uh, create categories for instance so courses a course needs to belong to a category so now we need to refer it so i'll do ctrl c on my keyboard ctrl v will duplicate this line so i need to tell it that you belong to category id you belong to another category all right every every course must belong to a category and must belong to a user that's what it means so now let's create a category table we go to the migration um we go to migration press up arrow key and we see the last one we did so now i'm going to change it to categories of course categories let's call it categories of course categories categories all right hit enter So it is done we now have a course categories migration if we check here we will see it you see courses categories uh, so if we come here we're going to fill in what's going to be in the category all we need is to see the category name table we're going to see string the string will be the name of the category all right and it's not nullable then we do the same thing for the description of the category uh, we're gonna call it long text description 
So I think uh, this works. Category name. Of course, every table in our database must have timestamp and soft deletes. Soft deletes. Every table in our database must have the two. Okay, we're good. Uh, we check another table. Okay, this category, we need to know how many people that viewed the category. So we have views and uh, how many people are subscribed. I don't think we need subscription. We just need views. So we need to make this nullable. So it will be optional to fill. So we can uh, also do the same thing with views. Or instead of nullable, do default. Default of default views is zero, and I'll do it integer. So I'd like to go back and verify that that's what exactly I did in courses. Under views for the courses, we need a default for it. Integer. We need a default. For subscriber count and integer count so subscriber count default is zero subscribers and default for integer view view count is zero so here just to maintain the same team I'll call this a view count it's always a good idea in programming to name your fields and variables very self descriptive names and that's what I'm trying to do here so we've done the categories and uh, we're left with how many tables remaining we have um, comments and then we have payments. So we do the same thing in our database, uh, in our command prompt. So we're going to call this comments. Comments table, enter. So if we come here, we'll see that comments. Um, migration has been created so comment migration has some interesting features I will try and copy what we have here oops uh, the user because I'm lazy instead of coding it myself I copy it so we'll go to comment migration put user ID so number one we need to know the user that is making the comment right then we need to know the body of the comment what is the comment they actually made table integer not integer it's gonna be long text long text and we want to know either comment or body I'll call it the body of the comment body and uh, it's not nullable none of them is nullable okay is there another thing we need in comments yeah soft delete everything needs close soft delete everything in life needs some soft deleting all right Oh, soft. Delete. So it turns out we also need to know the course where this comment was placed, and uh, we can do the course. Where is the course? Integer. We're going to do the course ID. Course ID. Integer, and uh, we're gonna make it nullable. The reason we're going to make it nullable is because the comment could maybe not on a course, but maybe on a, let's say, on a category. Category ID. So let's say they are on a category and they want to request for a special kind of course or tutorial or whatever. We just want to see it there, right? okay so i think everything makes sense so far everything makes sense all right uh we still have something left um we have the items i call them items instead of videos because a cost may be made up of something that is not a video right it cost may be just a write-up so I'm just going to call it items. The items belong to each course. But just picture it as a course will have many videos, all right? Each video is an item. Or a course will have many articles. Each article is an item, all right? So we have to create the items and tie it to the course. And then uh, we go ahead. The way we're going to do that is to come here. Our, new, our, our usual way, then we call it items. 
these are things that belong to the course whether they are articles or whether they are uh, whatever okay so it has been created now we are simply going to go here and look for the items course items so the first thing is the URL so we're gonna say table URL table um, string string should be the URL if there's something we're going to reference from somewhere I'll call it null level if it's a video we just need to reference where it is in uh, in on YouTube or wherever we're fetching it from okay maybe it could be a reference maybe somebody has finished teaching a course they just want to give students references that's okay then we can have description too. control C control V so we can have description here I'm going to call it long text long text capital T yeah then we have description description is knowledgeable too so it's okay and then uh do we need any other thing maybe we need to know the user that added it just to just for fun control v we can do user id and um, is it knowledgeable or not um i don't know but we can just call it integer okay i think um items made sense now we now know the course okay we need to know the course it belongs to I duplicated this line and then I remove this. It's not a cost cost ID. So every item must belong to a cost. That's what it means. And then there is a URL, there is a description of the item. Then what else? We know we know the user that created it. Okay, of course. The other thing is the long soft delete. So uh, it must be soft deleted soft delete we don't want anything ever leaving our platform so i think um so far um the only thing that is remaining is uh, payments and then the subscription and leaving the subscription for last because um we need to learn something uh interesting when we're doing that so the subscription is um so we're gonna create payments the same way we created everything up arrow key change this to payments Payments is the table that we're going to track uh, who paid what for what. Payments. We just want to keep our own record, even though our payment processor like PayPal or Paystack or whatever, Skrill, um, Stripe, they, they keep their own records, but we want to keep our own internal record, all right? So that way we can have um, some level of control, all right? so we've created payments table and the things we need to do there is which user paid for what cost and uh, what amount did they pay we need to know when they paid and how they paid which mode of payment so we can come here first thing i want to paste is soft delete because every table must have it then we're going to do table uh integer which user paid for what so i'm going to say uh, a user can pay for two things on our platform a user can pay for uh, courses uh, for now i want to put category even though it's not in our agenda but i just don't want to come back here we can do category the reason why we're going to do category is because um, let's say in the future we want people to be able to subscribe to one full category you understand what i'm saying um we're gonna do knowledgeable and that's the same thing we're gonna do here too knowledgeable so we now know which user paid for what we want to know how much did they pay so table remember what we use for amount you can use double double or float so i'll just say um amount amount date amount so i'm going to say 10 comma 2 and um, it's not no label all right it's not no label you must uh, have that 10 comma 2 and uh, we want to know if the payment was successful right 
so we're going to call it double we're going to say uh tiny int all right tiny int so what i can remember okay it makes sense now is a subscription you can say um, status so the status even though it's going to be nullable we're going to put default default started payment so what we're trying to do here is let me put other types of status so somebody started payment uh we got a um uh, we returned from payment processor or website so started payment so these are the different statuses we want to know we want to track at each stage you know payment is a very tricky thing somebody can go through a payment halfway and abandon it and then they come back to claim that the payment went through okay or maybe the payment went through but the payment processor their system might fail to tell our system that the payment has been done now this person's money is hanging in the mid air you understand so what we want to do is that once you initiate payment on our platform we start tracking it immediately that you've started payment you've gone to the checkout page you've entered your credit card you've done this you've gone out of our website to go process the payment with paypal and when paypal gives us a refund a return of your information we can now say okay paypal has confirmed that you made payment so we keep updating this status so if you call us any day to tell us that your payment failed we can simply see what transpired and where you quit or where you stopped all right it's usually a good thing to add while when building payment uh, processes so what i can tell right now is why this one is being highlighted uh, why is why is my editor highlighting this everything works well okay so uh, i'm gonna just ignore this because i don't think i have any error so that's we now want to know mode of payment and the payment processor right so we're going to know mode of payment whether it's card cash or whatever so here i'm going to do table uh, string mode of payment all right mode of payment will be uh, no label but at the same time it will be card cash or oh, what else what else what else what else i don't know transfer online transfer and so on remember that all these details will be kept by a payment processor but we want to keep the record too so finally the next thing we're going to do is just to check the uh, payment processor Oh, table string I want to keep record of the payment processor so uh, we're going to make it nullable in case we don't really need to fill it but we're going to put in color in uh, this thing a payment processor is example PayPal pay stack stripe and so on all right oh cool I think everything has gone well and the whole world is now able to use this and uh, the last but not the least thing we're going to cover in migrations is uh, multiple migrations and that is uh, uh, many to many migrations so to do many to many migration let us check here is it migration now relationship it's under relationship so if we go here if we go here under eloquent ORM relationships we we'll see many to many now that's going to tell us how we're going to create the uh, relationship you see many to many many to many is a uh, example a good example they gave you is that you have posts you have um, I'm trying to find a good example very simple basic example 
So um, since not seeing a great example, I don't know why they didn't give a good example here. But what what you have to understand is, uh, for instance, imagine in our own case now, the situation we have is that uh, um, a user can subscribe to a course. So many users can subscribe to one course. All right. And many courses can be subscribed to by one user. So one user can go ahead and subscribe to 10 courses. At the same time, in each of those courses, if you go in there, you see that many users are able to subscribe there. So it's many to many on both sides. That's what we're trying to achieve. And if you, you need to read this on Laravel, if you follow the instruction, uh, there's going to be a post table. There's going to be um, the main table, which is a, a course table. Then we have uh, uh, users table. Then the relationship table. Okay, I found it. This is what we're looking for. What we found the other time was the polymorphic relationship. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for basic many to many. Now, what you're going to name the ta table is um, the singular of both names, but then you have to put it in alphabetical order. Let's say you're trying to create a many to many relationship between roles table and users table. That's the example they gave you. Then the, what you are, what you're going to call that middle table is um role user role because uh instead of user role the reason is that you have to put it in alphabetical order r comes before u so you call it role user in our own case we're going to create a third table that we are going to call um course user all right because of course c comes before u we're trying to create a many-to-many -many relationship between user and course that will help us to monitor uh, subscriptions so we're going to call this course user course underscore user all right hit enter now when it's created uh there are some things we have to do at the model level and all but we've not got to that point yet but the many to many relationship simply carries uh just basic stuff look at it course user it simply carries the id of the both tables so the first thing we're going to see here is table um integer and um, the id is user id we want to know which user uh, subscribe to which course simple this is basic many to many relationship but the other thing we want to also know is in our platform users don't just subscribe to courses all right users can subscribe for one year to gain access to all courses that's what we want to do so we're just going to say uh, we just need an extra field here that will be able to track that this user has subscribed for one year. Um, we can we may not end up using the table but the field, but I just want to call it um, user account ID. So we basically want to know with this user which account did he subscribe for. I think that's just it. Um, of course, every user every table needs to have soft delete. Now, if you're confused about anything, don't worry. As we start building out, it will start making sense. Once we start fleshing out everything, it will start making sense. All right. Don't forget to go and read up the many-to-many -many relationship and the examples that they gave and all. It's very, very important that you read up this. Very important. Just take your time. Read up. Read up about people's tables and. Uh, a whole lot it's it's a very interesting concept once you understand it very very interesting and powerful because that is what puts your table in third normal form all right now looking at these i think we've done justice to all these tables we've created everything okay let me just uh monitor let me just be sure of the things we want to track here we've done user id cost id user account id so we want to know of course when this user made payment for this course so let's say a user paid for a course we want to know when you made the payment so i'm going to call it date time so table uh date time uh paid date let's know when you made the payment let's know the amount you paid um double uh, amount paid we want to know on so-so-and-so date which amount did you pay 
so we're going to do no label I think the fake thingy we can make it no label not sure but I think it should be no label paid date no I don't think so the frequency of the subscription so we want to know expiry date expiry date so we want to know, also know the frequency this is going to be string frequency or plan I think plan frequency plan plan can be monthly yearly quarterly I think uh, this is what we need plan okay so we need to make it um, we need to make it um, or like time yeah plan can be like time lifetime so we need to make it nullable okay I think we have sufficiently done justice okay we want to know whether this subscription is still active and um, we're going to call status Table, uh, integer, or tiny int, tiny int, status, status by default. Once the subscription is on, should be zero when it's being created. But um, when it's being created, it should be zero. But once the creation is done, we use prog our uh, software. Uh, function to make it to be on okay then a good status zero means it's off uh, one means it's on tiny int so I want to confirm how tiny int is used in Laravel um, migrations so just to be sure I'm not making any mistake under tiny int under st well tiny int so um it is actually called tiny integer that's what it is called um instead of tiny int tiny integer now I'm going to have to go back and fix everywhere we have tiny int Um, it's not there. Long text integers, I believe. Um, I'm just looking for tiny integer. So, so far, okay, it seems we have one last one. So I think we've generally done with this and I hope you enjoyed it. Now in the next video, we actually have to go and start doing a lot of coding and then you'll start seeing how we can use some ex external uh, plugins to automatically generate all these pages, our uh, uh, HTML pages, the front end design, everything. You're going to see it done like magic. So the next video is, uh, is just all about we doing a lot of magic. All right. Thank you very much. See you.